Thank you, Jesus. We receive his joy this morning. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And we receive your joy. Let's worship the Lord, Caroline Family, this morning. We enter in. Thank you, Jesus. As we enter into your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, enter into your courts with praise, we enter in this morning. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we allow him to take precedence in our life this morning. What a wonderful day for worship. What a wonderful day for the presence of the Lord. Do you feel his presence, Caroline family? Do we feel the spirit of the living God this morning? Early we rise to seek your face, God. And we seek thy face now as we enter in, enter in that place with God, in that place of peace, in that place of tranquility, in the place of hope, in the place where we're not afraid and not ashamed. And we come openly and naked as unto the Lord allowing God to do whatever is necessary for us to enter into his presence. We know that in his presence there is fullness of joy. We know that in his presence there are times of refreshing. Anybody want to be refreshed this morning? Anyone want to be restored this morning? Have I a prayer line that can now begin to open your mouth and just give God the praise this morning, just worship him? Father, we just worship you with the fruit of our lips this morning. We come not asking you for anything but thanking you for everything. God, we thank you for life this morning. We thank you for health this morning. We thank you for stretching out among us, God, and living with us, God, and, and having a place, a fortress, that place that we can go into and enter your presence, God. We just honor you this morning with the fruit of our lips, God, and we enter in. We enter in. We enter into that place, God, with you, that zone, Father, that sphere, Father, that the enemy cannot come. You said where the righteous run in and they are saved. We enter that pavilion, that strong tower. We enter in the secret place of the Most High God, where we abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Let's enter in this morning, family. Let's enter in. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and enter his courts with praise. We enter in this morning, God. We take no hesitancy. We take no drawback spirits. We enter in with the fullness this morning. We just dive right in this morning, God. We go right in that secret place with you this morning, God. And we bless you this morning, Father. We give honor to you this morning. We pay homage to you. We say God morning to one and God morning to all. God morning, God. God morning, Jesus. God morning, Holy Spirit. God morning, travailing men and women. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and enter in. We enter his gates this morning. We enter in the courts this morning. We go beyond the holies of holies. We go beyond the uh, outer courts, inner courts. We go now behind the veil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We enter in this morning. We enter in. Let's go there this morning. Allow the Spirit of God to take us to a new place in life. Allow the Spirit of God to take us to a new genre in life. We got a new beginning. We got a fresh start. We've got to jump start our day today. Our sister's day spring forth. We enter in. In that place where we can dwell in his presence. In that place where there is no hurt. There is no harm. There is no danger. This is where we go this morning. We enter in this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What is man that, that you are mindful of us, God? That you made us just a little lower than the angels. But yet you gave us charge. You knew something, Father, that we didn't know about ourselves. You saw something in us, God, that we didn't even see in ourselves. And so now we take the time to enter into your presence this morning. Forgetting about the things around us this morning. Forgetting about what happened on last night. Forgetting about what we're facing even on today. But we understand, according to your word, today will take care of itself. We don't worry about it. We're not confused about it. We're not nervous about it. But we know that today will take care of itself. So we cast our cares upon you today, Father, the God that we serve, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We enter in now this morning, God, and we bless your holy name. You have a people, God, that really are surrendered unto you. You have a people, God, that are not fake, that are not phony, that are not here other than to worship you, that we identify with who you are in our lives. And we thank you, Father, as we embrace your presence this morning. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, there are times of refreshing. And that's what we're asking for now, that refreshing spirit. Reacquaint us with you even the more, Father. Reacquaint us with you even the more. Everything that you have for us, God, we accept it now readily. We open our spirits. We open our hearts. And we ask that anointing that destroys every yoke. Let it come upon us this day, Father. Allow us to be blanketed in your presence, God. Allow us to cover us with the robe of righteousness. 
Father, we thank you for the garments of salvation. We thank you that we're covered in the blood. We're cleansed in the blood. We're washed in the blood. We're bought with the blood. We thank you for the price that your son Jesus paid for our lives. And we don't take it for granted, Father, but we thank you this morning. We just stop and pause. We stop and pause because sometimes we're so readily and hastily ready to move on, but we've never, ever considered the fact of what you've already done. So we acknowledge the fact, God, that we were sinners and you forgave us for our sins. Then you created us that clean heart. Then you renewed that right spirit. And so we thank you. We thank you for rebuilding, for restructuring, for reorganizing, for restoring. We thank you for revival. We thank you for every aspect of life that we have to continue on in the journey of Christianity. We thank you that the race is not given to the swift. We thank you that we're even counted in the race. Father, we thank you for the ups and downs. We thank you for the hurdles. We thank you for the obstacles, the obstruction. We thank you for all those according to your word in the book of Romans. You said that all things work together for the good. We may not see it. We may not know it. We may not understand it. But we know in everything that you say, Father, you're not a man that you should lie. Neither you the son of man that you should repent. With you, all things are possible. But with men, there's nothing that we can depend on. So we thank you for who you are in our lives. Elevate our spirits even the more today, Father. As we aggravate Satan on this prayer line today, let us be like an agitator in a washing machine. Let us begin to just tear him down, tear out the dirt in our lives, tear out the strongholds in our lives, begin to do a gully washing on the inside of all of us, God. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Father, that you look beyond our faults and you know exactly what we need. We thank you, Father, that when we were all wretches undone, you knew exactly what you were going to do in our lives. You knew how you were going to use us. You knew how you were going to restore us. You knew how you were going to bring us back to that place in you, God, when you first placed us inside of our, before you placed us inside of our mother's womb. You told Jeremiah that I sanctified you. I did a work on the inside of you before I ever placed you in your mother's womb. And so, Father, we thank you that that is a part, that, that stump, Father, that the seed is still in the stump. There's a seed in the stump. Oh, what a word was that to our mankind, God. What a word did you speak on our prayer line, God, that there's still a seed that remains in the stump. And so, Father, we thank you that no matter what chops up in life, no matter what pulls away from us in life, no matter what, no matter what things tear us down and tear us apart and try to separate us, try to separate marriage and separate families and separate uh, churches and separate denominations, but there's still a seed in the stump. And we thank you that that is the root of you, God. That's the breath of God. That which you placed on the inside of us that Satan cannot destroy and Satan cannot take away. And so, Father, we will continue to rebuild and restore the same as Nehemiah began to rebuild the wall. We will rebuild every aspect of our lives, God, in the places, Father, that we seem torn down, in the places, Father, that seem is just trash. It's just, but in that trash, you find treasure. Father, in those things that are burnt up and pulled apart and, and, and tangled up and finagled up, but you still yet, God, make sense out of it all. There's a sense, whatever we're going through, that there's a, a piece of the puzzle that only you can reconstruct. And so we thank you this morning, God, for every aspect of our lives. We thank you, Father, that we are the ones that know exactly your intentions toward us. And we don't get upset with you, Father. We don't get aggravated at you, God. But we wait patiently on every aspect of our life to get together one by one, name by name. We thank you for reorchestrating everything in our lives, God. We're your people, God. We're your people, Father. And we submit ourselves to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We enter in. We enter in this morning, family. We enter in. We enter in that solemn place with God, in that place of solidarity with God, where there is no restraints, there are no restrictions. And we capitalize on what God has for us in every aspect of life. I bless God for you being here this morning. Thank God that you're here. God morning to one and God morning to all on this Lord's day. We thank God. We call it Thankful Thursday. This is Thankful Thursday. And we're so glad to be here. We would ask those on social media, if you would please share the page on social media. If you'd be so kind as to please share that page, we'd be uh, so appreciative if you would do that. Please share the page with others this morning. We thank you for what you will do and uh, what God's going to do through us this morning on this prophetic prayer line. We talked about on yesterday about um, God will bring us through. God will bring us through. We also talked about there's some exasperated things in our lives that um, the enemy will try to come in and, and try to raise havoc in your life and try to bring, he tries to raise havoc in your life. Sorry, uh, prayer line, we thought you guys were unmuted. I had the music playing for the longest. I do apologize. We've been uh, uh, ministering for the last 10 minutes or so. I apologize. I thought you all were listening to the music and my phone was still on mute, so I do apologize for that. I apologize for that. Amen. 
We bless God for each and every one of you this morning and thank God that we all are here. Thank God that we're on with one accord and we bless and honor God for each and every one of you this morning. Thank God for you. Uh, we muted the phones because um, sometimes there's so much background noise going on and I muted my phone as well and I forgot to take it off mute. But we've been on the line for quite some time now so I do apologize to our family that's on our conference call line that we had not opened the lines up to you guys. I apologize for that. We were talking about how we're entering into God's presence and in his presence there's fullness of joy. In his presence there are times of refreshing. And so we're just a tranquil people. We're not a nervous people. We're not um, excited to, to, to uh, just rush into calamities and we're not excited to try to get in the hobnobs of life and we're not one that's uh, trying to readily uh, be about other things other than our father's business. This is a time where a uh, pivotal point in life where we really should zero in on, accentuate on the positive and forget about those negative things. The uh, Bible says in the book of Psalms, David is talking to God. Uh, he begins to talk to him. He says, make haste, O God, to deliver me and make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confound that seek after my soul and let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. There's a prayer that we can give as unto the Lord that he will put the enemy in his place. And we as a people, we have to know the exactness of what God is, the opportune time that God gives each and every one of us to put the enemy in his place. The enemy can only do so much. I think sometimes we give too much leeway to Satan. Uh, we give too much uh, attention to him. We give him too much credit for things that he really cannot do. He is not omniscient. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere all at the same time. Only God can do that. So we give him positions in our life that he doesn't have. Now, the only uh, thing that he does have is that he has imps. He has uh, demons. He has those uh, 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 those that are assigned, that are working with him. The one-third of the fallen angels that are working with him. So he places them on assignments. And so they aggravate. They irritate. They come in and try to disturb uh, your peace. And they try to come in and mess with your families and mess with your thinking abilities and mess with your blessings, mess with your anointings, mess with your favor. Whatever they can do, they're going to try to do everything they can to try to aggravate you and cause you not to concentrate on what God says. So what we want to do today is we're still pinpointing the problem. We're going to pinpoint the problems today, but we're going to know that the prayers of the righteous man avail as much. My Bible says it is the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail as much. David began to talk to God. He said, God, there's some people out there that don't mean me any good. He said, there's some people out there that seek after my soul. Uh, he was telling them that they're, seek, they're seeking after his life. And so we know that to be an enemy. Anybody that uh, doesn't want to see you do good, anybody that's jealous, the Bible says that jealousy is cruise the graveyard. And so those jealous people that are around you, that stop you, that hinder you, that put that thing out there in the atmosphere, amen, that the enemy wants to try to uh, accentuate in on, those are the ones that we want to keep ourselves away from. We want to separate ourselves from those people. So he said, let them be ashamed, God, amen, let them be disgraced and confounded that seek after my soul, trying to take my life. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Remember in the Bible when God says when the enemies uh, came together against David, uh, at one time he said he called those enemies to fight themselves and they began to fight each other rather than to fight David and his warriors. So this is the same God. He'll still do the same thing for us in our lives that we'll allow them to do. He will put that enemy to confusion. So what the devil thought he was going to mean for your evil, God will turn that thing around and make it be good for you. Don't you know that God will use the devil to bring you a blessing? God will use the devil to bring you a blessing. If it's his, his desire for you to be blessed, he doesn't care anything about Satan. He'll use that same devil to, bring a, to be a blessing to you. He said, let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. So here you are thinking that you're going to poke fun at my situation. You think you're going to pick at me because I had a, a pivotal point in life, that I had a pitfall, uh, that I had a, a, a hiccup in my life, that I had circumstances that didn't seem favorable in my life, that maybe peradventure you made a few mistakes, maybe peradventure you didn't cross every T and dot every I, that there were some things that happened in your life that everybody saw it. So God said, now let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, aha, aha. In other words, those finger pointers. Now you're trying to point a finger at me, but now you're going to be ashamed of what God's going to do with you. Amen, somebody. Because rather than you helping a person, whether you being there for the person, you're not trying to point a finger at them and aggravate the situation even the more. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such a love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. 
In all things, give praises unto Jesus. Whatever you're going through today, prayer line family, whatever the situations are, David said, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Why? Because let such as love thy salvation stay continually. It's the love of God that's spread abroad in our hearts, hallelujah, through the Holy Ghost. In all things, we're still giving God praise. In our ups and downs, in our hiccups in life, in our aggravated situations, in our loneliness, in our poverty, in our stricken sickness and infirmities and diseases, we're still learning how to give God praise. We're rejoicing in the Lord and we're still being glad. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. Can you imagine in the midst of a bad situation and instead of you act, act, uh, acting in, 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 as, as the way people would think you would, you do totally the opposite thing? Can you imagine in the worst time of life, salvation begins to stand up inside of you and you begin to declare, for God I live and for God I die. Can you imagine being stripped from everything, say for instance, that you've gotten your house uh, uh, in foreclosure, but you're still giving God the praise. Or maybe for adventure, the repossession truck is out in front of your door now while you're on the prayer line. You can hear all the noise going on, but your salvation is saying continually, let God be magnified. Can you imagine going to the courthouse and you're facing some time, maybe for adventure, you've got some fines, you've got some things that you need to attend to, but your salvation is saying continually, let God be magnified. Even in this situation, uh, your husband comes home and says, I just don't want to be married anymore. I just don't want this relationship anymore. And your salvation is saying continually, let God be magnified. Can God find the people that can uh, actually say that? Can we give God such a, a salute to where we can really allow God to be the God of our salvation in every aspect of our life? Allowing God to be magnified in a, in a, in a horrible situation, in a horrific situation, in a hurtful situation, in a uh, disappointing situation, in a letdown, a uh, harmful situation for real? Can we really as a people begin to change our lingo and change our personification of everything about life? It, it's not predicated. Your salvation is not predicated upon whether you're up in the mountaintop or down in the valley low. Your salvation is predicated on who you believe your God to be. If he is the God of your salvation, then he's a God in the repossession. He's a God in the courtroom. He said, the king's heart is in my hand and I turn it in the direction which I so desire. So we have to know for a fact that regardless of the circumstances Circumstances, God is still in control. It may not look like it. It may, it may not feel like it. Uh, it may not be something that you're accustomed to, used to, getting ready for, whatever it may be. But we have to let all those that seek thee rejoice. He said, if you're seeking me, you have to be in a continued position of for God I live and for God I die. You have to be in a continued position of in him his word is yea and amen. You have to be in a continued, it means you hold your stance. You hold your peace and allow God to fight your battles. Let all those that seek thee rejoice. And be glad in thee. We're glad in who? We're glad in God. We're not glad in the situation. We're not glad in the struggle. We're not glad about the obstacle. We're not glad about the obstructions. But we're glad to know that God is on our side. The Bible lets one to understand if God be for you, then who can be against you? He is more than every enemy that you could ever see. He is more than any enemy that you could ever face. If God be for you, nay, I say that you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You've got to just what? Pinpoint that problem. We gave them to God on yesterday, and you talk about a freedom in the Holy Ghost. Did anybody receive that freedom besides me? Amen. To my, of such a freedom in the Holy Ghost, such tranquility that came over our lives, a peace that surpasses all understanding. So now he says, now those you that you are seeking my face, you begin to rejoice. And then you be glad in me. Be glad in me. Not in yourself. Come on. Not in your boss. Not in your careers. But we're glad in God. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let God be magnified. And all that we do and all that we go through, regardless, don't change your language. Don't change your verbiage. Do not change it. Don't allow the devil to change your words. Let God be magnified. Let God be magnified. It may not look right, but let God be magnified. I may not have a, a home that I need right now, but let God be magnified. I may be driving the hoopty now, but let God be magnified. Because through it all, you learn to trust in Jesus. And through it all, you learn to trust in God. But the uh, uh, David says, watch this. He said, but I am poor and needy. Make 
make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. So he's first, he's building himself up in his most holy faith. He's telling uh, himself that regardless of what you're going through, God's going to take care of the enemies for you. God's going to deal with them. You don't have to concern yourself with that, Sister Annie. Don't you concern yourself with that. Allow God to fight your battle. He says, now what I need you to do is that the, if you're seeking me, then you begin to rejoice. So this is the time where we say, watch this family, where we always say, well, God, you know, if you haven't opened the door yet, then I'm just going to praise you in the hallway. That's right. We're going to give you a praise through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God. If you didn't go through the door right now, then let's just begin to God, give God praise right in the hallway because we know sooner or later, amen, so that this door is going to open. If you continue to praise God, hallelujah, and don't allow the devil to have a foothold in your life, don't allow him to cause you to withdraw from God, don't allow him to cause you to miss your mark in God, don't allow him to take the joy of the Lord away from you because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. He said, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Here he goes, here he goes. See, he's built himself up in his most holy faith. So he said, okay, God, now I've gotten my faith to a place where I simply trust you. He said, but when I called you first, I need you to come and see about me. He said, make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. So this is the time when he shut in with God. He began to remember who God really was in his life. He began to build himself up in his most holy faith, and he began to look at the smoke screens of life and knowing exactly what it is. This is only a smoke screen. This is something that is not real. So he's pinpointing the situation. He's looking eyeball to eyeball exactly. What is this thing that's trying to come between me and God? What is it that's trying to come between you and your salvation right now? What is this thing that's trying to deter you? What is this thing that's trying to be a stumbling block in your life? Don't you understand and recognize that God will take a stumbling block and make it a stepping stool for you? He'll take the same thing the devil tried to trip you up on. He'll take that same thing the devil tried to push you down on. Hallelujah. He'll cause that to be your strength. You got to know the strength of God, you got to know how God elevates, know how God promotes, and know exactly what God wants to do for you because you are a child of God. You belong to God. And so here he is, here he is. Watch him. Here he is. David declares, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Are you pinpointing it? That's a pinpoint right there. That's a pin. Put a pin right there. In thee, O God, do I put my trust. I'm never going to let a situation take me to the point that I'm so deferred of you, God. I'm never going to allow a circumstance to become a circle of stances around me that I am now limited, that I am now restrained, that I'm now cut away from God. He said, let me never be put to confusion. Oh, my God. Don't let me put, be put to shame because we know what James says about confusion, Sister Teresa. Come on. The Bible says in the book of James, once confusion comes in, all evil works comes in with him. So David said, for God's sake, don't ever, hallelujah, never, ever, never let me be put to confusion. We don't want to entertain confusion, so let's pinpoint the matter. You're not coming in here in confusion because we understand what accompanies you. We understand the assignment that you embrace. We know exactly what it is that you have accompanying you so we're not going to entertain confusion none whatsoever we've always told you prayer life family what the devil's intentions are his intentions are to change the body of christ he wants to change your personification he wants to change your dna he wants to change your personalities and once a person's past personality is changed then what once you have a different personality it means you there's two of you God only gave you one personality, but now all of a sudden you have a different personality, so now you have two of you, and the Bible lets one to understand that's a double mind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, so now your personality has been changed. His assignment is to change the body of Christ. Once you change the body of Christ, then you have bipolar incidents, you have schizophrenic incidents, because your personality has embraced a different personality. Now you're listening to more than one voice. You're not only listening to the voice of God, but now you're listening to the voice of Satan. So now confusion comes in. And when he comes in, here comes evilness. Amen, somebody. Here comes hardship. Here comes disasters. Here comes diseases. Here comes infirmities. Here comes everything else want to compound itself all in your life and it's not necessary. God said, no, no, no. Don't even allow that thing. Deliver me, God. Hallelujah. And don't even allow me to be put to confusion. We're not going to open that door. For one thing, we're going to pinpoint the fact that the matter is, you're not coming in. You're not coming into my life 
life. Come on up in here, paralyzed family. You will have not a foothold in my life. I will pay no attention to you once I submit myself to God. I know that I'm resisting the devil and he's got to get away from me. You got to get away from my home. You got to get, come on up in here, family. You got to get away from my marriage. You got to get away from my business. Amen, somebody. You have to know exactly who you are in God. Pinpoint this situation and begin to name it and let God know this is what the devil is trying to do, but this is what he's not going to do in my life. Have our prayer line family this morning. Have our family this morning that want to hear this word of God. So he said, in thee, O God, do I put my trust. Are we really putting our trust in God, family? Are we really believing God for the impossible? Are we really knowing the God that we serve can never fail us? Are we believing the God that we serve will never deny us? He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. David said, where can I go that I can get away from you, God? He said, if I make my bed in heaven you're, and hell, you're right there with me. So you got to know through the storms and through the rain that God is still there. He said, what I want you to do is put a pinpoint on that situation that's trying to stop you. I want you to put a pinpoint on that thing right there that's aggravating you, that thing right there. And then let's deal with that. Let's deal with that matter. Let's deal with that matter. Watch him. He said, deliver me in thy righteousness. Deliver me where now? He said, first of all, don't ever let me be put to confusion. David knew exactly how to pray because he understood the fact what confusion leads to. Confusion leads to what? Evil works. He said, don't let that happen, God. For God's sake, don't let that one happen. But what I do need you to do, I need you to deliver me in thy righteousness. Not in my self-righteousness. Not in what I think that is right. Not in what I assume that is right. What I hope that is right. No, no. He said, but God, what I need you to do right now is give me your heart. Yes, God. Give me your heart, God. Give me your desires, God. Whatever you desire for me, whatever you want for me, God. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Oh, glory to God. Did you hear that, Paralyzed family? The Bible declared that God has given man a way of escape. We just got to know exactly what the route to take. So David declares, he said, now, God, what I need you to do is deliver me in your righteousness and then cause me to escape and climb thy ear unto me and save me. Pinpointing the matter, pinpointing the matter, going toe to toe with that devil and letting him know, I see what you're trying to do, Satan. I know exactly what your antics are. I know what your schemes are, but I know a God that sits high and looks low, and he declares that the earth is the Lord's, good God Almighty. He declares that they, hallelujah, that call upon the name of the Lord, he will answer us. Amen. And so we know the God that we serve hears every cry that we have. Have our real prayer line this morning. Watch him. David said, be thou my strong habitation. Be You be the one, God, that I exist in. You be my strong habitation. The very existence of who I am. God, you be that for me. Where I live, where I reside. Come on. This is what I want God to be for me in my life. Do we really want that? Is God going to go everywhere we go? Do we want God to go to places we go? Can we take God everywhere we go? Is he going some of the places that we go? David said, be my strong habitation. You be my very existence, God. You be my existence. I, I'm in him and he's in me. I hide myself in God. Be my strong habitation. I need you, God, to be stronger than what I am. I need you, God, to be stronger than my very existence. I need you, God, to show up in every aspect of my life. Show up in every situation in my life. God, you be my strong habitation. Whereunto I may continually resort. He doesn't want to leave God's presence. He said, I, I can't go any place that you're not there, God. I don't want to exist without you, God. I don't want my existence to even be. Come on, prayer line family. I don't want to exist if you're not there. David said, where can I go, God, that you're not there? This is the same thing he's saying now. He said, you be my strong habitation, God, whereunto I may continually resort. I'm going to find myself a habitation in God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So he said, God, now this is what I need you to be. Even when everything around me doesn't look like God, when it appears as if there's no hope in my life, when it seems aggravation is all around me, suffering is all around me, hardship is all around me, disappointment is all around me. He said, but God, if I understand that you're my strong habitation, come on, so I'm going to make you God greater than the situations the devil present to me. I'm going to let the devil know that the God that I serve, is you're no, cha you're no challenge to this God. Your situations are no challenge to God. Your hardship, that's not a challenge to God. You think this thing 
and took God by surprise? You think all of a sudden the devil did something? Come on up in here. That took God by surprise? David said, God, I understand and recognize that you are my strong habitation, whereunto I may resort continuously. Thou hast given commandment to save me. Oh, oh, they missed that was Sister Coco. They missed it, daughter. David said, God has given commandment to save me. He lets the devil know that this one is not on your hit list, devil. The commandments of God, hallelujah, protect you. The commandments of God, that the instruction that God gave that devil. He let him know that there's some that you can touch, but there's some that you cannot. Don't you understand and recognize that you're one of the ones that say and cannot touch? The Bible declares that God has given commandments to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Satan got his orders. Satan got his orders. He knows for a fact that there's some you can challenge and some you cannot touch. And so these are they. You are the remnant out of the remnant that the devil has no authority over your life. Only what you give him is what he has. Only you surrender over to Satan is what he has. But when you recognize the Bible said he are already giving you a way of escape, he said, cause me to escape and climb that ear unto me and save me. He's giving you a way of escape. So you are not of the ones that are, are now are being... Uh, Irritated by Satan, aggravated by Satan, you're not one of the ones. He only has the lead way that you allow him to have. He only has the lead way. You're the one that are fooled by him. He's not fooled. He's not fooled. He knows his orders. He knows exactly what God's instructed him to do. So he says, okay, I'll just stand around and let them falter. I'll just stand around and let them uh, get weak. I'll stand around and let them get in a place where they're, they're really not understanding uh, that I can't have. What did the Bible say, uh, church? He said, the devil is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He understands that there are boundaries that God has placed in his life. There are limits that he's placed in his life. It's called the shield of faith. The shield of faith protects you from Satan. You just don't know it. This is why you've got to always be in that fortress. You've got to be in the strong tower, the, high, the place of God, the high pavilion that God places us in as believers. Satan understands the shield of faith. He know that he cannot, that, that the shield of faith quenches the fiery dark she's trying to send your way. Every time he shoots an arrow at you, the shield of faith blocks you. Have our prayer life. Every time he tries to do something to you, here's the shield of faith to block you. We don't understand it. So sometimes we let our guard down. Sometimes we let our shield down. And so now we're an open target for the devil. We're now being victimized in areas and scrutinized in areas that we should not be. It ought not to be for a Christian to always run from a devil. We should not always think that we're in harm's way. He has his instructions. Why? Because God said now, he said, my strong habitation, be thou my strong habitation. He said, I'm that. I'm that. I'm that secret place that you dwell in. I'm that. I am the strong tower where the righteous run in and they are safe. I am that. You have the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. You have that. What else do we need? What else do we need? We have all the whole armor of God. What do we need? So now you pinpoint the problem. What's the problem? What's stopping you from being the millionaire? What's stopping you from being the most anointed person in your family? What's stopping for you from being the entrepreneur? What's stopping you from being the prayer warrior, the intercessor? What's stopping you from being the most powerful preacher that you're supposed to be? What's stopping you? What's the barrier? Come on. What's the situation now that you're building up that God tore down? Jesus said, I nailed it to the cross, family. These things should not be mentioned among you because I've already dealt with it. So why is it now that we're not the ones that having a lucrative commodity career? We're not having a lucrative situation in God that the devil can't do the things that we're allowing him to do. Understand and recognize, hallelujah. He said, I gave Satan his commands. Remember when he talked to Job, when he talked to the devil about Job? He said, you got that old boy over there, and I want to do some harm to him. He said, who you talking about? That old astute guy, the one that does no wrong. He said, oh, you mean Joe? He said, yeah, you, yeah, that old Joe boy. He said, okay, all right, well, this is what you can do, but this is what 